Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the thriller films from 2008, titled Boot Camp. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. In the opening scene of the film, two men in all black suits appear out of nowhere, and drag a boy named Danny out of the room. The boy is shocked to find his parents standing right outside his room, doing nothing, so he asks why, and his father replies that they are trying to help him. In the next scene, we move to another teenager, Sophie. She goes into a store to return a disc tape she bought because it had a scratch on it, and starts to cause a scene. The attendant asks his colleague to take over the register, and then walks Sophie out to a corner of the shop, where it turns out that Sophie is in fact his girlfriend and she was just trying to prank him. Sophie invites him to a party happening later that night. Another satisfied customer. In the next scene, we see Sophie's mom and her stepdad entertaining a bunch of important guests at their home. Sophie walks in, and suddenly asks her stepfather, Carl, how many strikes she has left. She tries to embarrass her stepdad by saying the only thing that concerns her more than drugs is the play of corrupt politicians. It turns out Carl ransacks Sophie's room to make sure she hasn't been taking drugs. Sophie runs late to the party she invited her boyfriend Ben to. They go upstairs and ignore the sign that says don't go past this point. They get into one of the rooms upstairs, and light up a blunt. Sophie then asks Ben to marry her so she can live away from her parents, and Ben laughs and blames it on the weed because they aren't even 18 yet. All of a sudden, they are interrupted by two men, who tell Sophie that they have parental consent to take her. They restrain Ben, inject Sophie, and then take her away. Afterwards, Ben shows up at Sophie's house, and asks her mom where they are taking Sophie to, but Carl says that Sophie is away where no one can see her. She'll be there for a year because she was hitting herself and destroying their family. The following morning, Sophie is now gradually slipping out of unconsciousness in a boat. We also see Danny, the guy from the opening scene and two guards sitting at opposite sides of the boat. Sophie asks where they are taking them, and Danny tells her that the men are taking them to Fiji. Their boat finally arrives at the bank of the island and they are ushered out of the boat. After walking for a while, it turns out that there's an access point to a specific location on the island. The man who is in charge to greet the newcomer is Logan, the chief of security. He calls each of their names, and puts a sensor device around their ankle. Logan tells them that they aren't in a prison camp, there are no wall there, but if they leave the camp perimeter, the sensors in their ankle will inform security. If they try to swim to escape, they won't make it past the undertow. Logan instructs them to take off their personal belongings, which they do without uttering a word. Following that, Sophie, Danny and the last guy who we now know to be Jack are chained to a concrete on the shore of the island. Logan says that it will teach them how to be strong, telling them to enjoy their stay and leaving with the rest of his men. Hours pass, and they are still chained on the shore of the island. Only this time, the night is cold, and the tides of the ocean keep going back and forth on them. The next morning, Logan and his crew come back to unchain them. Dr. Arthur Hale, the owner of the boot camp, addresses and welcomes them. Jack swears at Dr. Hale, who then tells Jack that curse words are not allowed on the island. Sophie then tells Dr. Hale that chaining all them to concrete in the cold night was not a nice welcome, so Dr. Hale responds that it's because each of them has chained their parents to concrete all their lives. Once again, Jack calls Dr. Hale a sick freak and tries to attack him. So Logan pins him to the ground in one swift move. Jack screams in pain as Logan takes him away, while Dr. Hale continues to show Sophie and Danny the rest of the island. He tells them that the program requires a ton of dedication, discipline and some hard work. We are then introduced to Helen, a senior member of the boot camp that helps them settle in. They follow her around while she explains that everyone starts with a black shirt, and as they progress, first to yellow, and then to white, like Helen, she'll be going home in two months. Sophie is introduced to Trina, who takes her to her bed space. Trina is still in the black shirt level, and she always pays attention and follows the rules. When Sophie comes back out, Helen introduces her to Dr. Hale's sister, Miss Hale, who tells Sophie to get ready for the body cavity search, in case she is concealing any drugs. 
Meanwhile, Sophie's boyfriend, Ben, meets up with Sophie's mom, who tells him that he should let things be if he actually cares about Sophie. She also tells Ben that the boot camp named Serenity is in the South Pacific, and it is going to make her better. Curious, Ben goes home and does an insane research on the Serenity boot camp. As time goes on, Sophie and Trina routinely do what the program has assigned them to do every day, even though Sophie has to get used to all the unusual things that happen at the camp. Afterwards, we find Trina in the midst of the other kids at the camp. When Dr. Hale attaches a tiny mic to her shirt, Trina says she doesn't want to do whatever he is about to make her do. Dr. Hale begins telling the rest of the kids to give her their support, and asking Trina why she is here, but a visibly shaking Trina replies that she doesn't know. It turns out that during this session, the teenagers will be pushed to open up to everyone about their troubled past. Logan picks four people, including Helen, and they all push Trina and accuse her of being a slut, until she begins to cry and confess. She says that she got tired of her parents forcing their religion on her. So despite them, she makes a bet with her friend and sleeps with eight men. After her confession, Trina falls to her knees, says that she is sorry and weeps. Everyone starts to hug her and say they love her, except Sophie, who is doing her best to hold back tears. Later that night, Sophie wakes up to see Trina praying. Meanwhile, we see Ben buy hard drugs from a guy, and moments later, we see him in his room with a syringe, using the syringe in front of his mom. Back at the boot camp, during their dinner, Trina steals a piece of chicken, because they only get to eat chicken once a month. She hides to eat it, and sneaks away from the dining area, but unfortunately, Logan catches her doing it. He says that he was ready to recommend promoting Trina to a yellow shirt. He could also have her stay in a black shirt forever, but he will not do so if she goes down on him. Without having a choice, Trina does as Logan tells her. Later that night, the storm starts to get worse, and the tents in the boot camp begin to fall apart, causing everyone to run out for their safety. Look at them, the way they react. The next morning, Helen gathers the girls together, and puts Trina in charge of putting the tents back up. Sophie asks Trina why the boys can't handle the hard labor, but Trina barks at her to do as she is told. While lifting a piece of wood, Sophie falls down in the mud. Trina asks her to get off the ground and get back to work. However, Sophie insists that she is tired, so Trina says that she's not the only one who's tired, while Dr. Hale can only observe them struggling behind the screen. Trina orders the girls to beat Sophie up, and they do as told. After pushing her to the ground, they proceeded to beat the living hell out of her. Dr. Hales is seeing all this play out on the CCTV footage, and is proud of how tough Trina has gotten. In the meantime, it turns out that Sophie's boyfriend is already in the same camp as her. He tells the doctor that Sophie's in bad shape, but the doctor tells Ben he'll be the judge of that. Later on, Hale starts to list a number of things he already knows about Sophie. He tells her that she hates her mother, but Sophie replies that she doesn't. Hale then tells Sophie that her mother hates her, otherwise, why would any loving mother and father send their only daughter off to a stranger? Meanwhile, the senior takes Ben to his bed space, and Jack calls him a fuck stick. Ben asks him if he has anything to say, so Jack offers to tell Ben how things work in the camp. Moments later, Ben enters the dining area, walks straight to Sophie's table, and sits down. As soon as Sophie sees him, she stands up, and walks out so that they can be alone. Ben walks after her, and Sophie asks Ben what he is doing here. He explains that he started getting himself into trouble, and injecting himself with a syringe solution to convince his parents that he is doing drugs. Ben also tells Sophie that he's going to get her out of there, and he picks a fork and puts it in his pocket. The next morning, Logan is making all the boys in the camp run around the island. Logan takes them to the shore of the ocean where Sophie, Danny and Jack were chained on their first night, and asks them to swim into it. We learn that Danny can't swim well, he's struggling to stay afloat, and soon enough, they all assemble on the island. At this point, Dr. Hale promotes Trina to the second tier of the camp, and gives a yellow shirt. Later in the day, we see Ben trying to crack the lock of the sensor on his ankle, but then, a guard hits the door and barks at him to stop jerking off. Everyone assembles again at night to the arena where Trina was taunted. But this time, Sophie is put on the spot. 
And when she tells Dr. Hales that he is wasting his time, Logan calls four people to push her around. Helen is part of them, and so is Trina. They begin to push her around, until she hits her breakpoint, and yells at them to stop just before we see a flashback. We see Carl ask Sophie to apologize to the guests for her bad behavior, but after she does, she lies to the guests that Carl comes to her room every night, and tries to sleep with her. Sophie cries and apologizes for lying. Later that night, Sophie sees Trina go into a room with Logan. And just then, Ben covers her mouth from behind, and tells her that he has a plan to help them escape, but Sophie tells Ben that there is no way out. She also says that maybe the camp is the right place to be, because if she didn't lie, they would not be where they are now. On the next day, both boys and girls assemble again. This time, it's time to send off Nick, one of the students on the island who has been there for two years, and Hale is going to take Nick to his conference in Los Angeles. Hales asks Nick if he's ready to put the past behind him and forgive his parents, to which Nick says yes. After the assembly, they return to their camps, and Sophie whispers to Ben that they should escape when Hale is out of town. The following day, we see Ben trying to pick the lock of the sensor again in the toilet, but this time, it works. After some time, Dr. Hale leaves for Los Angeles, and Ben tells Sophie that they will escape tonight. Later that night, Ben picks Sophie up, and picks the lock of her sensor. They go to the CCTV room, and take their belongings that were collected when they first got to the camp. They manage to sneak out, start to the shore of the island, where they untie a boat, push it into the ocean, and jump in. Sophie asks Ben where they are going, and he replies that they are going to the main island, because there's a resort there. Unfortunately, as they reach far from the base camp, the boat breaks down, and they are carried away by the ocean. Luckily, the place where the boat broke down is not far from the resort Ben mentioned. After they reach the resort, it turns out that Ben thought of everything in advance, booked a room, and sent to himself an envelope with money to fly home the next day. Ben shows the receptionist his passport, and then he and Sophie go to their room. Sophie is happy that they were able to escape. Meanwhile, in Los Angeles, Dr. Hale is having a seminar with the parents of the troubled kids in his camp. He tells all the parents that this program was designed to ensure a positive future for their sons and daughters. Back to the couple, just as Sophie and Ben settle in over at the hotel, Logan and some men barge into their room, and beat Ben to pulp. Sophie and Ben are taken back to the camp, and as punishment for escaping, Dr. Hale puts them in the pit in front of all the other kids. He also says that because of the escape, all the teenagers will not have breakfasts and time off for three months. They will all have to pay for Ben and Sophie's selfish behavior. A little while later, we witness Danny's confession moment, but he stands firm and refuses to confess to attempting to harm his parents. Despite everyone beating him with canes, he doesn't break. Meanwhile, Ben and Sophie remain in the pit for days, where they have to deal with all kinds of weather, from rain to bright, sunny days. After two weeks, their cages have been significantly flooded due to the rain, and they are finally released. Ben is brought before Hale, who tells him that he nearly ruined Sophie's rehabilitation, and almost got her killed in the ocean. To ensure that Ben doesn't disrupt his plans, Hale informs him that he'll be sent home in a couple of days, and he warns that if Ben disobeys, he'll make Sophie's life a living hell. As a result, Ben attempts to distance himself from Sophie, and he tells her that they are sending him home in a few days. Later that night, we see Trina in a secluded area with Logan. He forces himself on her because he's the one who made those deals for her promotion. After that, Trina runs to the bathroom crying when Sophie sees her, and goes after her. Here, Trina breaks the news to her, she tells Sophie that Logan promised to help her get out of there faster, and then raped her. The next day, the boys are at the shore again, and Logan orders them to swim into the ocean like they usually do. Only today, the waves are bigger than usual, so it's harder for Danny, who doesn't know how to swim. When he goes in the water, he tries to call out to Ben when he starts to drown. But sadly, the noise of the waves prevents Ben from hearing him. All the boys get out of the ocean except Danny, and when Logan finds out, he blows the whistle and forces Danny to keep trying. Ben tries to save Danny, but being the jerk that Logan is, he holds Ben back. The next wave is so big that it knocks Danny off the pillar he was holding on to and nails him to the bottom. When Ben sees this, he jumps in the ocean, but is unfortunately too late. Ben and Logan try to give Danny CPR, but it doesn't work, and Danny is dead. 
Ben blames Logan for Danny's death, but Logan tries to shut Ben up, and he invents a story that Danny was just trying to escape. He then calls one of the guards, who picks Danny's lifeless body up, and carries it into a room in the camp. When Dr. Hale finds out, he is very upset because there will be an investigation about Danny's case. Hale suspends Logan from duty even though Logan tries to object. After Logan leaves the room, Miss Hale tells Dr. Hale that he went too far. But before she can say anything else, he slaps her across the face. Later that evening, the guards carry Danny's body away in a bag, and we see Hale talking to a local policeman. Moments later, Dr. Hale holds a meeting with everyone in the camp at the Confessed Arena. According to him, the law on the island is the same for everyone, so today it's time for Logan to pay his sins. At first, all of the teenagers are obviously terrified of him, but not until Jack barks at Logan to confess to killing Danny, but he doesn't. Trina then stands up, and asks Logan how many other girls he promised to give the yellow shirt to. All of a sudden, other yellow shirt girls begin to ask the same question, and Helen passes big sticks around. Sophie asks him if rape was part of that deal, and she also reveals to everyone that Logan raped Trina. It never has. Sophie then asks them to stop, and tells them that doing this only proves that they belong here, but Dr. Hale cuts her off and says that they belong in the camp because their parents want them to be there. Here Ben reveals the truth he found from his research about Dr. Hale, he tells the other kids that a girl had already died in the previous camp and there might have been others. Ben also condemns Hale's method, and if they don't stop this now, Danny will die for nothing. When Hale sees this, he runs out of the arena, and the teens start to destroy the tents in the camp. Ben encourages all of the teens to band together and fight the system at the same time. They get supplies from the kitchen, and set the entire place on fire. We see Dr. Hale is trying to call for backup, while his sister asks him what he has done. Meanwhile, Logan tries to leave in his truck, but some of the teens throw trash cans at him. As a result, he crashes into one of the burning houses and gets stuck. Before he makes his way out of the truck, the truck explodes. Later on, Ben, Sophie, and Jack go into the house Dr. Hale is in. Dr. Hale has a gun in his hand, and when he tries to shoot Ben, Jack attacks him from behind. When Dr. Hale gets his gun back and tries to pull the trigger, it turns out that the gun isn't loaded. It is revealed that Miss Hale took all the bullets out earlier, she tells Hale that it has to end one way or another. In the end, all the teens come together one more time, but this time, they throw Hale in the same pit he threw Ben and Sophie in. After Dr. Hale is left for the police to arrest, we see images of the teenagers celebrating freedom, and swimming in the ocean. Okay guys, that's all the recap of Boot Camp 2008, thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.